Welcome everyone, Simon here from the Wales of Wall Street. Today's video, Energy Web EWT. We've got some interesting, exciting updates from these guys that have come out over the last couple of weeks. And I want us to get really heavily uh, digested in some key terminologies, uh, particularly kind of relating to the equivalence, if you like, of ISO 222. Uh, we're going to be looking at the energies formatting of this side of things as well, with the integration and utility of blockchain within the energy sector. So before we go into that, don't forget to check out the other videos on the channel if you've not done so already, of course, after this one. And don't forget, of course, as well, to smash that subscribe button if you have not done so already. Uh, we're over the 8,500 mark. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and joining us. Hopefully you find it informative and educational. Um, and by all means, do throw any ideas, thoughts and comments below in this video or any of the community sections if there's anything you want us to cover. We've got loads of videos to be getting through over tonight and tomorrow uh, to catch up a bit. So let's go straight into this one. Now, first and foremost, uh, for those that are new to Energy Web Foundation um, or EWT's token aspect, uh, do check out our previous intro videos that I'll leave that at the end of this one. Uh, but there's a key criteria point that I just want to mention. If you are new, um, there is a webinar coming up or a Twitter Spaces uh, coming up on the March the 7th. So literally a couple of days from now. Um, so check that out, get registered and listen in on that because they will do a bit of an introduction to Energy Web and its mission strategy uh, from the last couple of years and the future. So highly recommend that if you are new and do definitely delve into not just our videos, but other channels videos as well on this, this particular topic and project because the next few years, especially in the energy sector, are going to be significant, especially with the integration of blockchain. Uh, top level overview, guys, is very much the aspect of being able to have full transparency processing of energy carbon credits. So carbon credits, obviously, like what are used right now and have been for decades to insinuate what our, our standard rates will be and how much uh, someone buys from a national grid and then puts that into the equation of you know, electric, electricity or, or gas providers to then give us the ultimate cost. And of course, I think it's very... Um, very apparent the last year or so is particularly how those energy prices have soared uh, through one reason or another. Um, I don't really pay too much attention to the news. I know exactly what's going on in the background, um, but they will for sure create some narratives to increase these prices and pay for things in the background. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but for me personally, I'm more interested in what's going to happen. How can we plan ahead? And in terms of planning ahead, uh, there's a few things that are coming into observations right now about you know the ability of Web3 hotspots to be able to transfer, transfer your own carbon credits from excess energy use in your own homes, in community drives and commercial drives as well. Um, and the ability for things like the EV cars, wireless charging, putting that back into the system. So there's loads of things going on. Um, do, as I said, check out the intro video because we cover that in massive detail. But my point being is that these next few years, particularly leading up to 2025, when we're talking about things like the CBDCs, the new RTGS system with the world's you know, finance integration frameworks being replaced uh, with blockchain technology, is no different in the energy sector either. So uh, in particular, We've always focused on the EU consortiums aspect of things, uh, particularly with the EU Commission. These are the guys that basically implement any kind of technological advancement or any kind of framework across the board, not even just in energy. It could be transportation, supply chain, whatever it might be. Um, these guys are very heavily in charge of how that operates. And Energy Web is one of the very few projects, um, you know, we cover a few other ones like IOTA, for example, that are heavily integrated in this now. And of course, you know, Europe being a massive continent, uh, there is big, massive opportunity market growth in this sector for renewable energy, for energy sector in general, but particularly the blockchain web free integration. So Energy Web is one of the top projects out there, in my opinion, if not the top one, uh, when it comes to this, this forte of conversation. Uh, I wanted to bring this to your attention before we go into the other topics. Um, this is very important to understand and know. So from the back end of, I believe, 2021, um, into the, the recent years, we've got this. Um, so the, sorry, the start date of 2022. The end date, October 31st, 2025. Isn't that convenient that it's very close to that November deadline where we've got the new RTGS system switching over? It's all coming together, in my opinion. Granted, it might shift a bit along with the other projects and frameworks and pilot systems that are going on around the world. 
but very interesting and intriguing that these dates are really starting to align as the stars would. Um, so this is a interesting project ID number that we need to start getting more and more associated with in our minds. Uh, project ID, I'm not gonna keep reading this out every every video that we do, but 101077033. This is the identification number of the project in particular of relating to blockchain facilitation within the energy sector and within the whole entire EU infrastructure, all the countries you could possibly think of in the EU. Belgium, Finland, Germany, Greece, Netherlands, Spain are particular piloting systems for this. Uh, but as I said, the European Commission, guys, this is literally from the top level. Energy Web's integration to this is quite phenomenal and very, very significant. And this in particular is what I'm interested in as well. B2B, business to business and B2C, business to consumer. We're looking at the adoption of very much the integration of Web3 development in the energy sector. This could be transferring uh, community to community, district to district, region to region, uh, excess energy back and forth. The ability to say, oh, I've got excess energy, I'm going to send, sell it on the grid to someone else across the other side of the world, you get some money for it. But it's not like I can sell it for like extreme amounts of money. It will be done based on AI data, algorithm data of supply demand and all of these things, which is something that we as consumers do not have access to at all. We just get told what our prices will be, our bills will be, and we just have to suck it up. And no matter how angry and, and, and disappointed we are with it all, uh, like we are in, in today's world, um, this is the potential to give the opportunity of transparency across the board. Now, a lot of people aren't going to like this, maybe the top level, the ones that love that old uh, profit margins and things like that. Uh, but who knows? I don't know which way uh, this world is, is trying to go over the next few years because you think about all the power that a lot of people have to not want this kind of thing to be in place. But there's ultimately always a catch-22. There's an element of the control mechanism, especially as we talk about CBDCs. Um, these are all great, amazing technological advancements, but they do have a massive downside if they're in the wrong hands and regulated incorrectly. We've already seen over the last century how the people have lost so much power. Um, excuse the pun, but like with the energy sector in particular, we're already on our knees. Um, and will this fix things or will it just be another method of control where they could shut potential things off? Because they're all connected, guys. The, the whole blockchain system, uh, especially the direct to cyclic graph aspect of it, the whole integration of, of everything working together is, is all connected and will be connected in the, in the years to come. We're talking about food, supply, supply chain in general. That could be uh, produce, it could be products, manufacturing, energy, transportation, everything you possibly think of can be switched on and off very easily with these new applications. So I'm really intrigued to know how this will be continued to regulate. Uh, but I know that Energy Web is looking down this decentralized avenue to really improve and enhance the existing energy systems out there. Um, so this is where I get um, quite interested, as I said, you know, this B2B mentality of like, you know, Similarly to the, the consumer project or becoming a prosumer, the commercial grids could do this also. So I'm really intrigued to see how this develops. But it's something we've been talking about for a long time, but we're now seeing the fruitions of these conversations and this research that we've done into actual concrete reality utility. And that's ultimately what we want to see, right, with a lot of the tokens that we hold. It's all great. It's all great having great projects on paper and white papers and stuff like this, but actually we're now into a phase where the really top level cryptos are going to really stand out because the utility is now becoming an effect. Um, so Energy Web is one of those ones that I hold with that principle in mind. Yeah, we're talking about a huge market here, guys. Um, you know, the renewal market in general, we're talking about like solar and wind, you're talking about like a, a $2 trillion market by the, the, the year sort of 2030. And even right now, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, globally, at least to $2.5 trillion worth of a market at this current day. Imagine what that would be in 2030. And when you've got the integration of a new system like this, that's going to enhance it even further. Well, all the money and the attention is going to focus on these kind of technologies, irrespective of whether they're cryptocurrencies or not, or, or in that web-free environment. The fact of the matter is there's going to be a lot of attention on this um, particular kind of project and technology. Um, if you can save money, uh, still make money, companies are going to be ticking those boxes 100%.
Now we're talking about here about grid transparency. We mentioned that just a minute ago. Again, the whole point of blockchain about being transparent, uh, showing the verifications, the processing, the we can even see publicly uh, where transactions have gone. And that's exactly the same at a granular level, as it mentions here, of what we could do with the energy sector. So Energy Web is heavily involved, as I said, with the European Commission but they're also heavily involved in loads of different consortiums uh, within this topic as well. So distribute energy resources, energy communities. This is really exciting, guys. Uh, the DERs is a really massive uh, point in this as well, um, allowing allowing this massive uh, you know, fluctuation of carbon credits being able to spread across the world. It could enhance so many lives. You think about how many countries maybe don't even have access to energy or the ability to, to pay for energy because it's way too high, uh, whether it's because of a distance issue or whatever it might be. The fact of the matter is it's all done on carbon credits. Now, that's a really hard thing to get your head around, to be honest, because all you see is your gas coming out of your hobs or whatever, and you see electricity by turning a light on. <laughs> um, and, and you know it's coming from you know, wires and pipes right but actually the principle of the payment of that and how that is shifted in a market and on a trade exchange is done by carbon crediting and this is where web3 becomes a really exciting point in that to be able to become transparent to be able to become more efficient and allow us to transfer energy more sustainably and efficiently so if we look as i always mention with a lot of the videos this concept of agenda 30 the un's documentation you can download you can read the whole thing about sustainability diversity it's all in there you can literally plan your life and everything is going to happen from an investment perspective over the next seven eight years that are left to that point and big part of that is sustainability and that's why we talk about things like the ripple xrp and all these other massive huge projects um that are going to be specifically delivering utility to exceed these goals as well as achieve them um, and this is a massive point guys this is a massive point to understand and research projects that are heavily involved with iot ai uh, the algorithm of dag that we've mentioned before but also the sectors that are involved in and how significantly detailed and integrated are they with existing frameworks you look at the finance industry, we cover a lot of things like, you know, quant, etc. We took, we cover IoT and AI with the likes of IOTA. Energy web is no different for the energy sector. Trillions upon trillions of dollars, guys. Absolutely phenomenal. And it all integrates. My exact point here, the energy web ecosystem compromises leading utilities, renewable energy developers, grid operators, corporate energy buyers, automotive, IoT, telecommunication leaders, and more. It's all about the blockchain system, guys, over the next few years absolutely huge uh, the electricity market is the back of this article from energy web uh, the reform of the eu's electricity market design energy web is heavily involved in this consortium and advisory board um, it's absolutely phenomenal to see and i'm very interested to see um, how this new design will look apparently by the end of this quarter i.e the end of march or perhaps into april the commission intends to adopt the proposal with any relevant amendments to the electricity market design we could see some significant changes over the next few months. And and granted, in my head, we are in, in here in the UK where we've got these um, uh, these kind of like uh, monetary values from the government to help us with the bills, there's going to be a story, guys, over the next two years about the financial infrastructure, the energy sector, of how it's failed us. And they're going to come up with an elaborate solution that we've, we've fixed it. We're the heroes, the government, the parliaments, the World Economic Forum, everything. When actually all it is is the blockchain technology and projects like this in the background who have already been working on it for four or five, maybe even ten years. Um, and they're going to come around with this narrative and story that this is a new solution. Everyone will jump on board, not understand how it works, not your percent of the population. Um, but those that are in crypto, those that are in the blockchain sphere, and you listening to this video have at least got a minimum of 10% knowledge now of what's to come. And this is the funny thing about it in my head is that they will be seen as the heroes when actually uh, we can see it. This is what I'm talking about planning and understanding what's going on in the background to identify how we can take advantage of this right now and with the market trends and everything that will come in the years to come so this is huge guys this is a huge development and an adoption of this this is what i was telling you about the id situation co-found co-funded by the european union under project i'm not going to read it out again uh, but yeah this is again heavily involved energy web right dead center in this particular image because that's yeah, they, they've made this article but there's a lot of big massive huge companies in this in the background uh, from a partnership perspective and a consortium aspect of this as well 
But again, reiterating the point, European Union's transition towards a clean energy economy and the ability, of course, as well, with all these other things, distributed system operators, financial institutions, uh, distributed energy resource aggregators to exchange trusted data from organizations and assets. This is all about carbon credit movement. Um, and deployed across a multitude of EU countries. Guys, I don't know how much more I could throw out at you about all of this, to be honest, to, to really emphasize that if you haven't got an interest in the energy sector with relation to crypto and blockchain, I suggest you do. Um, and that is advice in the sense. I'm not advising you to go and specifically get energy web tokens or anything like this or any particular price points as such. I'm asking you to do your own research in this sector because once you understand and realize the integrations that are coming and are in place right now, this is going to be gigantic. And it's not really an, uh, a sector that people talk about too much, which I find a bit surprising, but it also shows you how early all of this stuff is still. Uh, so yeah, the INEEXS project, uh, again, relating to what we've just already shown you with these, these new systems and frameworks, this is what we need to get our heads around and more integrated to in relation to research and everything like that. Um, look at this. By 2025, more than 15,000 customers will be benefiting from new and smart devices and almost 4 million euros will be saved in energy costs by the end users thanks to the improvements of the existing and viable business models validated by four cases. This is all to do with the integration of blockchain technology and that's just the beginning. When this is adopted by the whole world as well as Europe, we're talking about a significant new infrastructure and way of living and obtaining energy as well as prom providing energy to others. Um, so this is huge, guys. I'm going to leave it there on that whole topic aspect. I hope that you've at least learned something and do, do, do take some time, please, to research this whole entire sector and blockchain infrastructure for the energy uh, industry. Absolutely phenomenal opportunity uh on that note let's go into the chart of ewt uh, the energy webs token on the exchange so this is just taking the data from qcoin in particular uh, and it's certainly the place where i go and buy my ewt and then i go literally straight onto the e uh, energy webs uh, staking platform and stick them on there uh, as and when i buy them um if you want a video on that by the way just let me know um we're still waiting for the gold pool uh, to, to arrive as well, which is more significant percentage increases on the, the APY. But for now, let's look at this price point here of EWT. A lot of people still suggest that this is like a high price point. And it probably is compared to a lot of the projects out there that you see for like one cent, 10 cents, 50 cents, whatever it might be. Uh, but we must understand like the magnitude of value in this, the magnitude of the possibilities of how many people uh, are really investing in this. Uh, and for me, yeah, there's an argument that you know, a lot of projects out there, maybe even this one, are using automatic market makers to keep those prices fluctuated upwards. Uh, but in general, I, I don't believe that too much because I do see it coming down with markets as everything else does. Um, you know, and, and a lot of that in the background when it's automated does tend to um, you know, remove itself from that market trend. And I don't really see that massive energy web. But what I do see is people's interest is rising in this particular project. Um, so irrespective of the price point, if we look at the longevity of this, I do honestly think by 2025 and especially into 2030, this is something that could be easily well over that $100 mark, maybe even towards the $500 mark by 2030, maybe even beyond that. Uh, you know, we're talking about the huge sectors that are involved and, and where EWT or Energy Web is positioned in this sector. There is a huge opportunity here to take some significant gains. Um, and I'm not comparing this to any other change. I don't like where people call like things Ethereum killers or this is the next Bitcoin. It's its own thing. But as I said, in each of those um, you know projects, they're all within their own different sectors or their own different utility, right? And I think that with the energy sector in particular, you know, we talk about Power Ledger and We Power and a few others. I think Energy Web is the top one, honestly, in, in, in my opinion, just because of what it's doing and how far advanced it is in its projects and case studies. So we've had this upward mo movement with energy. I'm just going to move the fib retracement over a bit uh, from the last uh, video that we did. Not move it too much. There we go. Uh, so we can start seeing a bit more of a balancing effect right now. Uh, we've had this kind of like stable point 
um, for, for a week or two, bouncing around this $4 mark. And it's very close to where we are right now. It's just come under that area. Um, literally, I think yesterday or the day before, it may have dipped just under $4. So it's really like trying to attract itself back to the $4 mark. Um, and we're going to see maybe some sideways movement or bubbling up and down around this light blue area of the fib retracement right this takes us to around 410 um, but what i'm intrigued to see is where we've had our previous buy areas i've still got that buy order in by the way i'm just going to draw it again over this side um, this is where i've got my reflective buy orders just around that sort of 380 mark and i've also got one at the lower regions of three dollars not quite at three dollars i've just got around like 320 and then if it does get to that area and starts um you know trying to adjust itself around that area i might look at some lower positions perhaps even back to where we had previous ones and i think i've still got limit orders actually at that 280 mark as well so just for the reference points of today's video and looking into the, the modern area of where we are with this price point those are the two areas of significance for me on the way down um, I do however still DCA when I can and that's if I see another day or two uh, of sustainability which is matching back here at the beginning of February and what we saw back here at the end of last year I will do some DCA opportunities around this not significantly massive but I do would, I would ideally love to be saving that good sort of one dollar maybe one and a half two dollars uh, on this kind of price point we'll have to see how the market goes over the next few weeks uh, we're approaching like april now where we see like the the end of the tax years here in the uk uh, across the board around the world really we've got loads of different things like interest hikes etc who knows what the economy will throw at us or the recession will throw at us over the next month or so so i'm really keeping a close eye on this across the whole entire market to be honest to see just in case if we have a massive drop down again guys we could even see um your know, ewt hitting those two dollar marks again and i will be buying up for sure a big massive sweep up there so there's a few things to take notice of in this short period of time that may be ahead of us uh, the rsi is showing 46 on 14 days so this is again as i said a, a kind of really good dca area for me personally that's not financial advice just what i'm doing but if if i'm looking at that coming down slightly lower to that 350 320 that's where i see see the rsi on 14 day coming down to around maybe the 40 mark 38 sort of area and similarly to the 28 day as well i need that 28 day mark to come down to around 45 before i go a bit heavier in with some extra investment on that the 90 day is pretty flexible at that 50 mark as it always has been uh, but again i think if we see a massive penetration downwards that could signify on that that higher spectrum of rsi that we've got some great opportunities to accumulate and have some really massive upturn in the future when this big bull cycle comes probably in a year two years time i i, I truly anticipate 2025 is going to be very significant for the whole market um, but that, that's very much my thoughts right now on what I'm doing with EWT. Nothing too special. It's it's still in that nice area for me personally, especially if you look at it a long term. It, you know, the fuss between two and four dollars arguably isn't enough, but it depends on how much you accumulate, right? Um, performance indicators on the right hand side obviously negative on the week now that's uh, very apparent in a lot of projects at the moment it's still strong on the month which is one of the the only few green ones in this area on the monthly but the three months and six months i'm not too fussed about this it is negative but it's not massive and a lot of projects are still showing you know really bad uh, areas on that so it's again overall as a storytelling mechanism not just with ewt but the whole market we're starting to see these little reds kick back in and it's almost like the confidence is not necessarily running out but everyone's either running out of cash or they're just being you know very risk management driven and i rightly so because i think this next month or two are going to be really weird uh, in my opinion um, and people just need to be cautious of that and i honestly have got all my big bags of, of cash and capital ready for any of the big significant drops that I'm anticipating. It may not happen, but that's that's what I'm feeling. And I have felt for about a year or so now that we, we need a, a big world crash. Um, I, I don't think we need it. I don't want it. But this is something as an opportunity, which is what I see this market and trade aspect as uh, for that to happen. Let us know what you think about that in the comments below. But I think the next month or two are going to be really significant uh, before we can even discuss proper bull cycles and taking us up. I think these have been major fake outs. Uh, obviously, a lot of it was AI driven. and Everyone you know, jumping in with a narrative. It didn't last very long, especially not as long as the NFT and metaverse conversations did a year or two ago. Um, so, you know, the opportunity is potentially there in the near future, but I'm happy to be de at these areas because I believe in longevity and where the price points will go. But 
yeah, it's all about risk management and seeing what's or trying to see what's ahead. Um, but guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to wrap that one up there. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch up with Energy Web very soon. And as I said, don't forget to research the energy sector, particularly with blockchain. You'll be absolutely fascinated and you'll start seeing exactly what we've been going on about for the last two, two and a half years with the energy sector and blockchain. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.